Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. And I am so fired up today because I just got back from the mountains. Yup, I was in Vail, Colorado. I was breathing the rarefied air at 9,000 feet when the foliage was changing. And man, oh man, am I feeling great today. And you're going to reap the benefits today on this great episode. As a matter of fact, in just a few minutes, you're going to be hearing right from the mountains of Vail, Colorado. But first and foremost, who else loves this time of the year? It's October. The foliage is changing. It's cool in the mornings. It's crisp at night. Oh, man. I, and football is in the air. Yes, I love October. I love November. And uh, this is Q4. We're in quarter four. So I want you to make sure that you challenge yourself to be the absolute best self that you can be. You know, speaking of Vail, uh, the theme of the TD Mastermind retreat that I just had, we had 80 fire-breathing dragons over in Vail. And the theme of the retreat was iron sharpens iron. And now I love that. It's biblical. Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron. Show a man or a woman sharpens another. I just have a couple questions before we go out to Vail. And as you listen in uh, to today's episode, I want to ask you about your iron. <laughs> Like, who's sharpening you? Iron sharpens iron. Who's sharpening you? Like, who is in your life that's sharpening you? What is in your life that is sharpening you? Or perhaps, who or what is in your life that's not sharpening you? So boys and girls, men and women of all ages, shapes, and sizes today, I want you to think of this episode as iron. Pure iron that is going to act absolutely fire you up, strengthen your body, mind, and your spirit. And I want you to feel the spirit and the soul from Vail. And, and lastly, before we go out there, one of the things that's most important, we had 80 people in the mountains with three days, three days of retreat time. I believe when you step away and you actually work on your business and your life, like magical things happen, especially when you're, you're in energy where you're in the mountains, you're in a great place, and, and you're breathing. And I think you're going to feel the energy in the room, even as you listen in today, as you're working out or you're in the car, wherever you're listening to this episode. I want you to feel that, but I also want you to commit to something here in Q4. I want you to commit to doing one thing this quarter, October, November, or December, that is going to help you iron up your business, your relationships, or even your life, your personal growth. And uh, if you don't know what that is, there's many ways you can do that, including taking a vacation. But I'm also going to invite you out to, in November, in one month from today as this goes out, November 7th, if you need to iron up, I want to invite you to my 3.5-day mentorship program. Now, if you're a fit pro, if you're a coach, if you're a trainer, if you're an entrepreneur, or if you're someone who wants to get to the next level in your life, this is my deepest and most intensive program I offer. It's on all aspects of business, on leadership, on branding, and most importantly, on personal growth. I want to coach you over a three and a half day period right here at Fitness Quest 10, where I record this podcast today, and the resort that we'll be at in between our sessions where you can go deep on all aspects to iron up. So when you do that, you can take a look at all of the information, toddurkin.com slash mentorship19, toddurkin.com slash mentorship19. Check it out. It is not too late to take action. If something is speaking to you, a lot of times head trash gets in the way of why you can't be somewhere. Find out why you should be somewhere. And if you're not in the fitness field, but you're looking and seeking and searching for the next level, I promise you that the 3.5 Day Mentorship Program has not only changed thousands of people People's lives, but this 19th one, the 19th mentorship is going to be uber, uber special. So take action. It's 30 days away from now. So if you take action the next two weeks, I'm telling you what, you're in for a treat. So iron up, iron sharpens iron. Who sharpens you? If it's calling for you to go deeper, you definitely want to take action. Without further ado, what I like to do is I want to invite you to go out to Vail, Colorado with me right now. Now, what I did is this we had 80. 80 
passionate fit pros in a room for over three days at the Mastermind Retreat. Now, the Mastermind are people I coach on an ongoing basis. We chose four people randomly, selected them to go deep, and they asked me questions on stage. Now, you're going to hear some hoot and holler, and this is real stuff. You're going to be in the room at the beautiful Sebastian Hotel, and what a resort it was. When you go to great places and you dream big and think big, and you're getting challenged, what's going to happen is this. You're going to hear topics on family, on on, uh, parenting, and if you're juggling uh, the challenges of growing a young family along with a budding business. How do you balance that all out? Tony Johnson and Rebecca Gravalja asked that question about uh, what does it take? And then also uh, Heather Farncrog asked about how do you go through different challenges in your business? How do you get through and persevere through obstacles, adversity, challenges in your business? And when your clients, your customers, and your members are going through that. And then Jill Rooks, you're going to hear a spirit and a soul talk about the recent loss of a parent and how the family dynamics can also be different. Bottom line is this. I am committed today in this episode for the next 40 minutes as you pump away on the treadmill or the elliptical or you're pounding the weights and getting strong of your body. I want your mind sharpened and I want your spirit sharpened. So buckle up. Let's go out to Vail, Colorado right now. This event just happened just a few days ago and you're going to feel the spirit from this live event right in Vail, Colorado. Let's go out to Vail right now. All right, welcome to the Todd Durkin Impact Show. We are in Vail, Colorado, in front of 80 fire-breathing dragons. Can I hear you, fire-breathing dragons? <laughs> yeah, this is the first time we've actually gone live from a retreat, and uh, we've been here in Vail. What a gorgeous place uh, this community is, and it's not snowing yet, but we've been hiking, we've been working out, and uh, we have hand-selected four of our members today to feature uh, with some awesome questions, and uh, we have Jill, we have Heather, we have Tony, and we have Rebecca, who are going to be firing away some questions. This is going to be a dialogue, so buckle up. Whether you're right now, you're out for a run, you're at the gym, you're working out, you're on a plane, train, automobile, you're taking the kids uh, to school right now, I want you to listen into the wisdom because the questions that we're going to have today, I believe are going to impact someone out there listening in. And as always, I love the, I love the questions you're asking. Please keep asking them. So first up, Jill Rooks, welcome to the Mastermind Retreat. Thank you, Todd. So, um, yes, thank you very much for having Tell me Tell us here. a little bit about yourself. I am a studio owner in Redlands, California, so I've had a fitness studio for the last eight years, and I've been a member of Todd's Mastermind for the last five years, and uh, religiously listening to everything he says since 2005, I think. It's been a while, and I, I still remember even back to the strong days, you took your whole community to the Script Parents High School field, and we did the strong workout. Yep. You come to the impact events, and mm-hmm. you bring your community, and the Energy Lab, and you guys have such an awesome community, and I think that's because of your heart-centeredness, that what you bring, your purpose, how you contribute to the mastermind, how you contribute uh, to those in your community. So thank you for what you do. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Um, you provide the context, and that's part of my question. What was, is your, go ahead, fire away. My mom... Um, was one of those who came to your strong impact events. Mm-hmm. Well, not, well, your strong events when you're on the TV show. And um, you met her firsthand. And so my question, which I think we might be going into at this point in time, would be this year when we came to retreat just a few days, uh, yesterday, first Todd starts by saying, what were your big five for the year? And I couldn't remember a single one because that was January of this last year, 2019. And the reason for that is in March of this year, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, and four, year, four months later, she passed away. So all of my big five of 2019 just completely disappeared. And in being here just about five weeks since her passing, it's been very moving and very refreshing and restorative. But I went through a lot, and while I was going through those months with her and her care, I often thought, what would Todd do? Which is what a lot of us stop and think. Because I know you come from a big family. And I know your mom is everything. And I know you are everything to her. And you and she share that fitness lifestyle and that mindset. She always has her her biceps out for you. And I just wonder, were you in my shoes running a business and engaging with a community like my Energy Lab community, like your Fitness Quest 10 community, how, how would you handle 
keeping life going and being there for your parent and making decisions with your big handful of siblings. Isn't it interesting how sometimes life throws curveballs? We have our big five for the year. We, we know what we want to do for our life. Matter of fact, right here in the mountains, we're talking about our vision for our life and, and for the next 90 days, and then all of a sudden something happens. And that's called life. And uh, everyone listening in right now, today, as you listen in, perhaps you've been recently thrown a curveball or you're going to be thrown a curveball. It's happened to me. Jill, I've been praying for you throughout this whole process uh, with your mom, and um, I know how hard it is. Uh, yes, my mother uh, has mothered eight children, all one mom and one dad. Uh, I'm the youngest of eight. We have seven siblings, five sisters, five sisters. Let me repeat that. Two brothers. And, um, you know, if I was to put myself in your shoes, I even think back to when my father passed away when I was just 20 years old. I don't care if you're 10 years old, you're 20 years old, you're, you're 50 years old. When you lose a parent, it's a very emotional thing, right? Um, I think the mindset is always like, it's first off okay to slow down and grieve. Grieving is a healthy thing. Slowing down is a healthy thing. Um, many times we have many balls in the air, especially if you run businesses, you own a business, you manage a business, you work at a business, you have a career, you aspire uh, in a career. And all of a sudden, something happens to your son or your daughter or to your mom or your dad or your husband or your wife. Now you're like, man, how do I get through this? I always think about how do you get through the day? How can you get through today? When you're battling, if you're battling today with anything, it's like, you know, the win the day mentality. Well, you might not be striving in business during the darkest times of your life, but getting up, sometimes just getting up and standing up and putting your shoes on and going out for a walk with a dog and smelling the fresh air or going for a hike um, does wonders for your, your soul. And when you slow down enough and you remember the good things about your mother, uh, you change your state of mind to gratitude versus either feeling sorry for yourself or, or getting so downtrodden and depressed that it paralyzes you. And I've been there. When my father passed, I spent many a weeks feeling depressed. I remember running up and down the beach on the Jersey Shore crying as I'm sprinting, and it was like minus 18 degrees out. We all have had those moments. Um, but I think it's that mindset of you got to keep going. You got to keep fighting. Um, and knowing that as you entrust your business to other leaders, if you have people in your business, people always understand way more than you think, and they cover for you. Why is it in times of tragedy, the world stands up in times of tragedy, and there's more love, there's more peace, right, typically right after a huge event? Why is it that we need some massive tragedy in our lives or in this country for us to, to be more in the moment, to be more where our feet are at, right? So I commend you, Jill, because you've always been very heart-centered and led that way. Um, and lastly, I would just say this. You gotta always protect your energy. You always have to protect your energy. Whatever any of us are going through, how do you put your oxygen mask on, whether you're working out right now as you listen, you're going for a walk, I want you to commit I want you to commit right now as you listen in to say, this is what I'm going to do for my body today. I deserve this. Maybe it's to get a massage. Maybe it's to, to book a training session. Maybe it's to talk to your therapist. Maybe it's to, to book a, a date night with your wife or your husband. That's, that's nourishing to the soul and to the mind and the body. But today, I want you to do something where you're going to actually do something to get up, to get up and get through the day. So when you're down, you got to get up. you got to keep fighting. And, hey, what's the theme of our conference, Joe? What, what's the theme of this conference? Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. Who's your iron? Part of the reason that is is, folks, as you listen in, who's your iron? Who are you listening to? Right now you're listening to a podcast. I'm hoping that this is part of your iron. It shouldn't be your only iron because you need to make sure your trainer is your iron. If you have a trainer or your, your training partner, your friend, your colleague, who's your, who's your iron? Do you have faith? Faith in God? Is, is that your iron? What are you hanging your hat on? you got to have iron to lift you up to a place where you want to go. Because at the end of the day, when the tough time comes, if it's just your flesh holding on, we're not strong enough. I'm not strong enough. When it's just us, if I just relied on my own physical strength, the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. That's why we have to nurture that spirit. That's why we have to nourish the body. The body, that's why we're here. we got 80 trainers and coaches, some of the best coaches in the world right here in this room. Why? We're stepping away from the hubbub from the stress of every day to work on ourselves. And it's no different than anyone that's listening to the podcast today is permit yourself and don't feel guilty about it. 
is to actually to say, how can I be a better man or a woman? How can I be a better mom or dad? How can I be a better son or daughter? And do the things that you know you need to do to honor your soul, to honor your body. The body's a temple. Treat it that way. And remember, iron sharpens iron. What are your thoughts of that, Jill? Oh, everything you just said. Thank you. Fire breathing dragons. Y'all <laughs> like that out there? Hey, we got a raucous crowd. Like, they're like fist bumping and everything else. I like this. I like this a lot. All right, let's go over to uh, Rebecca. Rebecca, you're up next. What's your question? Uh, well, before we question, introduce yourself. Tell our great listeners. We got some fire breathing dragons listening. Who are you? Where are you from? And a little bit of background about yourself. Uh, my name is Rebecca Grijalva. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, former studio owner. And I retired my studio to be home with my kids. Mm. And my question for you is, well, I've always admired you. I've always Thank you. looked up to you as far, like with everything, but family especially. And this was a hard decision for me to step back and be with my kids more. And you wear the dad hat and you've, you've, you really just embody that whole family man. And there's a lot of business coaches out there who don't have families, who don't have children, and they're trying to coach entrepreneurs on how to grow their business, but there's not that connection there when it comes to family and children. So my question to you is, for an entrepreneur, how would you, how would you, what would your, what would your best advice be to address mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. to be successful in both areas? Rebecca, I talked about this uh, with my wife, Melanie, on a previous podcast about the most difficult hat I wear is the dad hat, the family hat. Um, I love training. I love business. I love everything I do. It's my passion. But I also realize when I step away and I put on paper in my annual roadmap that we work on, like my core values and my legacy, we can think about legacy and you know, what you want to be remembered for, first and foremost, a great dad and a husband. So... What you put on paper, how do you actually um, transfer that into real life, like living? So that if I'm leading a business, Fitness Quest 10, we've got 42 teammates there and hundreds of amazing uh, clients, how, how do you balance that out? That's the question I get asked a lot, like you, Rebecca. It is the hardest thing to do other than what are your priorities? When you, when you have a lot on your schedule, you got to look at the schedule and say, where is this going to fit in? Right now, I am volunteer coaching my kids between the 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. That's hard. That's hard. On the weekends, I'm volunteering with the strength editioning and with a team. Like, that's a lot of time. But guess what? This is what I realize. I realize that in a few years from now, this time soon shall pass, and I won't have that. And if I'm going to be remembered as a good dad... I have to make that a priority at the expense sometimes of great opportunities. There are opportunities right now I'm saying no to that I'm like scratching my head like, should I really say no to that? <laughs> I don't know if that's the right business move, but it's really like, what are your priorities? Ultimately, what I'll do is I'll pray and say, hey, God, what's the right choice in this decision? Like, what, should I take this opportunity to go speak in Russia or here in the States or to attend loose game? By the way, the reason why we're doing this retreat right now in Vail, Colorado on this weekend as we record this is because it's a bye weekend of my son Luke's football game. Like, it's a priority enough that I want to be at that to, to schedule events. So you have to prioritize your schedule based around your priorities. It's never easy. It takes sacrifice. I'm not always the perfect dad. The first to admit, like, man, I try to be that all-American father, but sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I come in, I've given it my all. You know, Wednesdays are long days, and I, I'm, I'm at the office most of the day. And I come in, and I, I you know, I got to take off the trainer hat and the entrepreneur leader hat, and I got to be the dad hat, and we're going to sit down at the dinner table, table and eat together. And I want to ask about McKenna first, her soccer practice, because it tends to gravitate to football all the time. So McKenna <laughs> goes first in the priority order, and then, uh, and then we'll talk football. And the most important thing for anyone listening that is trying to establish family as a priority, even though you love your family, you get torn, is that nighttime routine for me is really important. That nighttime routine includes prayer with my kids. From the time Luke was born 16 years ago, I established a routine. And we made it up because I don't remember where I saw it or heard it, but it was like establish a routine for your family. So when we pray and we thank God for the blessings we have and a roof over our head and food on the table, some of the simple things is always um, uh, the, 
the little routine that I'll say is, um, I'm so happy I can do anything, and I love my Luke Brady McKenna. We're the Durkins, we always do our best, and we never give up. I still say that to this day to my 16-year-old, who probably at this point doesn't want to say it, all right? But I tell you this, when he goes off to college someday or when he's in his 20s, that there's going to be a point in his life, like Brady and McKenna, he's going to remember that routine. So prayer comes back to prayer. It comes back to the, the priorities. And ultimately, um, uh, at business, there's obviously has to be systems in place at business for me at this stage in my career, now over 20 years in as a coach and business owner, is that we've got great people. You've got to make sure you build up your team and you have systems in place where if you want to step away for a few hours, a few times a week, I couldn't have done that five, ten years ago. Now I've built up the systems enough and have led my team enough to entrust you know, all of my team back at Fitness Quest 10 to continue leading and fostering excellence and keeping our culture at an all-time high, right? Someone once said, if, it's, if, you're the, if you're the one in the business, you're the only one in the business, then you don't have a business. How do you create a business? How do you create other people within your business? So if you have to step away or you got hit by a car or you get a cancer diagnosis or something happens, could you still go on? So I think about that a lot. And part of being here in Vail is for all of us to step away and think about, hey, how do we, what are our priorities? What's the vision as a mom or a dad? What's the vision as a leader on that? And I think that's one of the, the, uh, the best things that we can do is to continue to work on ourselves. And lastly, not beat ourselves up when we're not perfect. Because a lot of times you can get guilt as a mom or a dad because, you know, there's so many demands on us and you're trying to do the best for your, your kids. And the kids, my goodness, Kids sports today, my gosh, it's crazy, right? Like the demands, the different clubs that, that are available, and you got to have different coaches here. And, and, heck, I'm in that world because I'm a coach. But also I'm a parent, and I see that. And you got to keep the priorities in line of like, hey, what's most important? And are you having fun? And are you learning? Are you growing? Are you getting these different character traits that are going to help you when you become an adult of learning how to lose? Learning how to lose. Like that's a really important thing. No one likes losing. We don't like losing, but it's a really important thing. So uh, does that help, Rebecca? Absolutely, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Tony, you're up next. We've got four awesome people up here. We've got a huge crowd here in Vail. And uh, Tony, introduce yourself, Tony. Thank you for having me, Todd. My name is Tony Johnson. I'm the owner of Mindful and Fit Coaching in San Diego, California. I lost 145 pounds in 2010 thanks to the inspiration and the energy that Todd provides. Wait, um, stop. stop. Hold up. You what? I lost 145 pounds in 2010. Wow. <laughs> wow. Let's not undermine that, folks. That's huge. Think about that. As you're listening in today, here's Tony. If you look up here, if you, if you can see Tony, if you can't see Tony, let's, let's describe Tony for those of you that can't see him. Okay? Yeah. Tony is, is fit as a fiddle, and here's the thing. You look at Tony, you would never know that you once weighed how much? 337 pounds of 337 pounds. Here's the moral of the story before you even ask your question. Don't judge a book by its cover. You look at Tony, you're like, man, that guy's got it all together. Fit, good looking guy, right? Any way you're walking around the street, you see someone, you don't know what they've been through. You don't know what they're going through now. Tony, congratulations, that is awesome. 2010? Thank you so much. Um, and to your point, one of the reasons I've been so inspired and influenced by you is that you coach to the whole person. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember the impact book when you received a letter every Monday from your father. Um, and I left my career in 2016 as an academic professor of speech communication to live my purpose hmm. and my passion, which is to inspire as many people as I can to implement healthier habits and transform their lives from the inside out. And in my practice, I have a growing and emerging business. I'm blessed to have a baby on the way in February 2020. Nice. And so my question is, you've been through this, you've lived this, you've been blessed to grow an emerging business and brand and grow uh, an emerging family. Can you give me advice on how to proceed at this pivotal moment as I'm blessed to grow my family and my business simultaneously? Wow. First off, congratulations, Tony, on your success up to this point because I always talk about live a life worth telling a story about. What's your story? you obviously have an amazing story. I think part of your success is gonna come in you sharing your story and getting out in all different mediums and platforms. 
because there's a lot of people out there who are looking to lose 30, 40, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 150 pounds, 200 pounds on that. And uh, Tony, your example will be example for your family, for your kids, for your clients and members who you do your online training and coaching with, and for you as you um, go into different platforms as well and share that inspirational story. Um, looking back, starting your business and growing your business, when I look back, I don't know if I was to do it again, if I would do it the same way because I sacrificed a lot of family time. I think part of the reason why I'm a quote, great dad now, is because of I don't think I was a great father when my kids were real young. My knucklehead mindset was they're so young now, they're not gonna remember. If I build it now and I build something really special, when I get older, like I won't have to work as hard. But I did miss out on some really, like, some of the t-ball games and soccer games because I was teaching a Sunday morning outdoor adventures class for four years, the first four years. Saturdays, I taught till one o'clock. I liked coaching on Saturdays because the energy was different on Saturdays. I enjoyed it, but I wouldn't go to the family events or, or the games because I was making money for the family so we could buy a home someday. And, and I was justifying my workaholism by like, it's doing the family good. I'm, I wouldn't take back where I'm at now but I wish I would have, number one, enjoyed the process more, and two, I wish I would have said yes more often to when Luke and Brady were a little bit younger of just holding them more and just enjoying the moments. Yeah, and um, to your point, my father was an entrepreneur, a serial failure entrepreneur, and he was always away in the name of providing. Um, and when he was around, he was always sort of upset and resentful that he wasn't able to provide. And so that's a, no, a big self-limiting belief I have in my business and growing, um, is that I do want to be present and available. So if you were me, the first question, follow-up question is, would you trade off some of your sphere of influence to be there for those initial moments with your kids? Yes. And then how would you advise me moving forward with you being my like ideal, when I'm 50 years old, I want to be you, with a slightly demograph different demographic, how would you do things differently? I would have said yes more to my wife. Mel and I never really struggled to the point where we like, we're gonna get separate or anything like that, but there were some tumultuous times early on in our marriage where she wanted me places, and I said, sorry, hon, I gotta work. I love to write. I would be writing all the time on the weekends, and I, I missed out on a lot of uh, date nights and just time. And to, to the point of your father, my father fathered eight kids, and my parents got divorced when I was five. My brothers and sisters, again, I have seven of them, my brothers and sisters knew a different father than I knew. Because when my dad had his first heart attack, he was 48 years old, I was just 10 years old. So he had a massive transformation when I was a young kid. I was actually the fruit of that because he changed from being a very driven type A personality to m my sister Karen and I got more of his time than any of my brothers and sisters. So I knew a dad much different than my older brothers and sisters knew of their dad. And maybe some of you can relate out there. But to your point with the letters, one of the lessons I learned from my dad in him writing a handwritten letter to me every single day while I was in college up until the day he died, actually I received his last letter three weeks after when I went back to college and received that letter was time. And I always struggled with that, but I also want to be a successful dad. So um, what I would say is this, talk to your wife, listen to her, and what's another five, 10, $15,000 a year when it comes to your business or whatever that number is, if it meant your business, you were married to your business and you could have really cultivated your, your relationship with your wife more and don't miss the moments with your kids. One of the moments I remember in our first home we had was I'd have the early morning shift with Luke. 4 a.m., I didn't like getting up at 4 a.m. then. I'd go down on the couch and I'd put him on my chest and I'd try to take these really deep breaths so he would so he would go back to sleep. And he would, he'd fall back to sleep. Looking at it now, I wish I would have done that every day. And I didn't, I didn't do that. So I don't look back and live with regret, 
but if I could give any wisdom or counsel or advice to someone like yourself who's starting a family, and we've got people out here in the audience I'm looking at, or if you're listening in and you've got young kids, at the end of the day, how is that son or daughter going to remember you? It's probably about you were there at their little league game or lacrosse game or football game, and you were cheering them on. You were encouraging them, um, and you were with them, and you're spending time with them because from zero to seven are very formative ages. And our, us fathers, we, we, we need more positive fathers in our life, right? Um, a lot of people don't have that positive male influence in our life. Pa fathers are very important in our lives. So um, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you to be a dad and to share your story. But I'm going to call you out if I see you working too much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Any other questions on that? No, I just, just follow up. I, I know I just met you this weekend, but you've been inspiring me for over a decade. Mm. And... I actually took the inspiration of your father writing a letter each Monday, and the day I found out on Father's Day that we had conceived, I've written a letter every single day that I'm compiling into a scrapbook. Wow. Yeah. Look, so that's like the first thing I do every Look at the morning. audience. You guys can't see the audience. I got jaws dropping right now. I got jaws dropping. Any of you moms or dads listening in out there right now, the other thing I'll do besides writing that is I have cleat notes. I write to... Uh, uh, Cleats notes for McKenna on all our games, and Brady and Luke now get helmet notes because my dad had helmet notes. So those notes, and I just told Luke the other day, you make sure you save them because if, God, if, if, if dad ever leaves this earth, I want you to look back because I love looking at my dad's handwritten notes. And they'll have a, a consortium of different cleat notes from the time they were you know, young to do that. So moms and dads out there, it t probably takes you 30 seconds to do, to, to do that. Great. Lastly, uh, those of you who are married and want to encourage uh, and, and really work on your relationship, I think one of the, the best gifts I ever gave Melanie, she'd probably admit this first, is um, got this idea to do a gratitude journal. And from one Thanksgiving to another Thanksgiving, I journaled every day without her knowing. And that following Thanksgiving, I gifted her the journal. And that handwritten journal, she could take with her forever because let me tell you, if there was a day when we weren't getting along and I was frustrated at her or she was frustrated at me and I wasn't feeling the love, I still journaled. I still journaled. It wasn't on the good days. It was on the days that were, you know, stormy and, and not so pretty as well. But that gift didn't cost any money. It was time, right? So all you moms and dads out there, it's about time. And I'm the first to admit I can always do better. All of us can do better. But hopefully today in this podcast, you remind yourself of, hey, maybe I could take three to five minutes out to write a handwritten note for, for uh, your son or daughter. Or even if your kids are listening, because I know a lot of your kids are going to school right now listening in, is write one for your mom or your dad and say thank you for what you do, because I know you're busting your tail to put food on the table, to have a bed that we can sleep in. Because there are a lot of kids out there that don't have those privileges, and that's gratitude. And that, to me, is called impact. Tony, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice. Heather. Hi, Todd. Hi, Heather. <laughs> great to have you here at the retreat. It's so great to be here. It's my first retreat with all these amazing masterminders and, of course, with you. Um, I'm Heather Farncrogue. Uh, my studio is called Heather's Gym, and it's located in Libertyville, Illinois. Um, I have an amazing community of people there that um, are so excited for me to come back with lots of energy and ideas from this retreat. So it's great to be here. Great to have you here. So my question for you kind of relates back to, to what Jill was talking about. Um, we, we all were talking this weekend about how we coach our people when they are going through um, personal struggles. You know, we show up, we bring the energy and the positivity, we bring the wow, we bring, we, we bring all, our, all our juice and music and we can always deliver that to them, and we know when they're going through their struggles. But my question you, to you, Todd, is how do you coach people differently, or do you coach people differently, when the personal struggle is, is here, is, is you? Um, I myself am going through a difficult time. I have a family member who is, who is um, not doing well and is being self-destructive, and it's, it's very, it takes my energy as, as you talk to us about staying away from the energy vampires. But I still have to show up and deliver uh, an energetic class for my people. And so I'd like to know, how, how do you make that happen? Mm. Deep question, Heather. 
Thank you so much. And uh, if you're a fire-breathing dragon trainer or coach out there listening in today, you probably have folks in your life who are battling something as well, a member or a client who is facing a difficulty. Hey, perhaps it's you right now, and you've got to put this smiley face on, and you're going through this tough time because you get to inspire 10, 20, 50 people, 100 people uh, a day, whatever it may be. Or if you're listening in right now, and uh, you might be, hey, preach TD, preach TD, because as you're driving in right now, you're struggling, and you don't even know how the heck you're going to get through today because you're battling so much, whether it be um, you know, stress, anxiety, depression, unhappiness, confusion, whatever it may be. Thank goodness our bodies are temples. I often look at Fitness Quest 10 and our studios in which we train at as sanctuaries. You go visit the sanctuary when you need to get your body and your mind and your spirit right. One non-negotiable when you're going through tough times is that you train and you work out. If I was to look at any of my athletes or clients, most of them are going through something personally or their family. There's a lot of different family dynamics going on in the world today and there's a lot of negativity out there. So thank God we have gyms we can train at that actually lend positive light into you. So make sure you folks listening and you are training at a studio that lights you up, that you feel good at, that you're like, man, this place lights me up. Because when you're in an environment that's conducive for big thinking, for training hard, and that you can get after it, you can almost forget about things for an hour or 30 minutes, depending on the model you run. And all of a sudden, 30 minutes later, an hour later, you're like, wow, I feel so much better. Why? Well, I call it dose. Dose, not dose of Durkin, but dose. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins are released. Those chemicals are 10 times more powerful than morphine. So the, the exercise and training, and all of a sudden you have a coach who is sharing goodness with you and positive, positive thinking with you. Now you're transforming that day. So for me, when I'm dealing with someone who's going through a tough time in their life, which is every day, every single day, I've got a prayer list that looks like a book of people who, who are battling different things. Some small, some big, but everything's important, right? And to me, what I always say is this. I don't change the way I coach in that session. It's probably what happens outside of the session. All sessions when you're training, if you're a coach or trainer, should be led with empathy and love and heart. It's not about that boot camp instructor that's yelling and barking at you. It's about love and how you push and challenge someone to the brink of what they don't know if they can do, and you push them through that, and training becomes a vehicle to release what needs to be released to get through those difficult times. What happens when you're battling a lot of times is you don't want to train, so you don't show up to the gym. That's a number one mistake. Show up. Just show up and be there. I don't care if it means sitting in the corner and soaking in the energy and breathing. It's really good for you to do that. Words matter. Remember, words matter. What you say matters. You have to listen with your eyes. Let me repeat. You listen with your eyes. You ever notice when you look at someone, you don't sometimes like, is, she, is he all right? Is she okay? Trust your gut. If your intuition says there's something going on, after the class of the session, pat on the back. Is everything okay? What's going on? How can I help you? And then have silence and let them talk. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had in my 20-year career at Fitness Quest 10 with people crying out cathartic releases of the just the crazy things they're going through in life. Whether it be diagnoses, whether it be depression, whether it be a loss, whether it be a suicide. So many things. This is called life. And as life transformers, whether you're listening in as a trainer or you're someone who trains at a gym who's trying to change your life, you got to show up. And if you're going through something, show up. So to me, it's always about how can someone feel me? How can someone feel my heart? With our 42 coaches at Fitness Quest 10, I imagine this. Imagine you have a three-foot tube from your umbilical cord to their umbilical cord, and don't lose the umbilical cord. They need to feel that. They need to feel inspired. They need to feel your soul. Because I can hand you a clipboard and say, hey, here's your exercise of the day. Well, why did your session feel different than her session or his session? It's because the heart that you bring to it. And as you listen today, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast at this point into the podcast if you didn't understand what it means to get up, to stand up for what you believe in, to make the commitment today, whether you're going through anything, as Jill shared, as Heather shared, as Rebecca shared, as Tony shared, is you got to keep fighting. you got to keep fighting the good fight. Stay in prayer. 
keep showing your kids what it's like to be a man or a woman of strength and of courage to get through the tough times. Because the tough times, if they're not facing you today, they may face you tomorrow. And once again, iron sharpens iron. Proverbs 27, 17. We talk about it all the time. Iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens another, or so a woman sharpens another. Who are you hanging with? Who's sharpening you up? Be the iron. But there's times you're going to need some iron. You're going to need to lean on someone. There's times when I leaned on my community. Last year with my knee surgery, I leaned on the people I'm looking at right now in the room here in Vail, Colorado. I leaned on strength. When I was on strong, I would sometimes pretend people, I was people I wasn't. I was pretending I was people in the mastermind who were strong that could get through crazy, crazy different things. Like, you got to have your mind so right that I'm going to get through this challenge. So, Heather, sorry for the long answer, but does that help? It, it sure does. And I just want to thank you for teaching us and encouraging us to lead and coach from the heart. Because that is an amazing, amazing thing that you've done for us. Thank you. Well, when you talk about heart and not your heart, uh, the more stuff you go through, the more challenges that you're going through, realize this. When you're going through a difficult time, and sometimes you feel like you're alone, and you're the only one that's been going through it, um, I believe a sign of strength is actually reaching out for help is to actually reach out and say, here's where I'm struggling. And you realize, wow, I didn't know there was so much love around me or so many, so many people who have been through what I've been going through. So a couple things. Number one, I want you all to train hard. If you're going through tough times, you train hard. If you're an aspiring mom or dad or you're expecting here soon or you've got a young family, remember this. It's not always easy. Regardless if your kids are really young, they're newborns, or they're in their teens, or they're out of the house. Like, you still are a parent, and you still love your parent. As my good friend Larry Indiviglia always has said, you're only as happy as your saddest child. That's profound wisdom when you think about that. You're only as happy as your saddest child. You can make all the money in the world. You can be a great entrepreneur, a great trainer, a great business person, whatever your career is. But if you have a child who's not happy, you're probably not going to be completely fulfilled as well. So our duty is to make sure that we continue to be good stewards and good leaders of what we do. And again, it comes back to our physical conditioning, our mental mindset, our spiritual health, and taking time, as I always talk about here on the podcast and all the live events, is nurturing your spirit and your soul to do those things that make the soul sing. Step away, folks. If you're battling right now, step away and get clarity on your life. It's hard. Some of the people I'm looking at as I, as I record right now in Vail have literally scraped nickels together to get to this room, have taken trains literally from the East Coast to get to Colorado, uh, have come from Hawaii uh, to be here in difficult times. Find a way to be in an environment that fosters your best self and work on you because now being in my upper 40s, I realize this, learning never stops. Learning never stops. My faith can always grow. My physical conditioning can always grow. My family dynamics can always grow. I can always be a better brother and sister to my seven siblings. I can be a better husband to Melanie. How can I grow right now? How can I grow? So think about this as you uh, go today about your day is, as, uh, as Jill mentioned, as Heather mentioned, as Tony mentioned, as Rebecca mentioned, um, we go through tough times. When you're at the mountaintop, and we're at mountaintop here at 8,000 feet, enjoy it. Enjoy the mountaintop. When you're at the bottom and you're in the valley, realize this. It's about the climb. And about the climb is you making sure you get up, you lace up, you hire a coach or hang out with a coach or you train with a coach who's going to lift you up and help you get you to where you want to go. And if your son or your daughter stumbles, then you lift them up and you keep patting them on the back and encourage them and loving them because everyone needs a cheerleader. And to me, that's what it's all about. Any final thoughts from you guys as we wrap it on up? Heather? Thank you so much, Todd. What a great weekend. You're welcome. Tony? You're a legend. <laughs> Jill? Uh, just keep remembering what would Todd do. And um, mm. iron sharpens iron, so we really we rub off iron on each other. Iron sharpens iron. I like that right there. Rebecca? Um, I have to agree with Jill. What would Todd do? Mm. You know, you're always in the back of my mind when I'm faced with a decision, and how would I, how would I approach this? How, how would Todd approach this? So... I appreciate everything. Well, I appreciate your words. And here's, I'll end it with this, is when I'm going through a tough time, as a man of faith, I often ask myself, what would God do? What would Jesus do if, if, if he was in this situation 
regardless of what your faith is, have faith. But I would say this, you keep fighting, you keep going at it, and you remember that you're always stronger than you think. And you don't know how strong you are until strong is all you have left. Train hard, eat right, and live inspired. Thanks so much for joining us from Vail, Colorado. Fire-breathing dragon, what do y'all think? Yeah!